The American Society of Civil Engineers rates the country's infrastructure from A, meaning exceptional and fit for the future, to F, for failing and unfit for purpose. In 2019, they reported that all of California's bridges, roads, and transit systems earned a C rating or worse. They also gave the infrastructure in Riverside County, San Bernardino region an overall C rating. You know, Riverside County faces a $12.6 billion funding shortage to meet just the current needs, not even the needs into the future. Um, and like I said, some of it's due to aging infrastructure, but most of it is due to the sheer number of people who live in Riverside, uh, and many of whom who have recently moved to Riverside. And so we see that travel patterns are changing, where folks live and work are, are changing. And so we need to uh, continue to invest in that. Riverside County Transportation Commission has identified many high priority Riverside County projects that need to be addressed. First. Funding is needed to make improvements to the Mid-County Parkway between Paris and San Jacinto, uh, to Interstate 15 between Corona and Temecula, and to Route 91 in Corona. RCTC is currently seeking funding uh, to um, improve the 8.6 mile segment of the Mid-County Parkway along the Ramona Expressway to critically enhance the safety and access there. And that's a key corridor for employment, education, healthcare, and for the transit routes in what is really an underserved area. Bridges need significant investments. They're in dire need of retrofitting and expansion. I'll just give you an example. Uh, Palm Springs needs multiple bridges over the Whitewater River. Uh, that flood or are covered in sand, in sand during sandstorms. But we also need to be investing in public transit. Uh, again, the RCTC has placed a high priority on expanding its passenger rail options for residents throughout the county. Uh, the agency is aggressively pursuing grants to help develop uh, the Coachella Valley Rail. And that's a, a planned 144 mile rail corridor between Los Angeles and the Coachella Valley. And that will dramatically reshape not just transit options, but economic opportunities uh, throughout that corridor. So that's critical. And lastly, as it relates to the, to the infrastructure needs, electric vehicles are, are, are going to be rapidly adopted uh, due to uh, Governor Newsom's uh, mandate that uh, electric vehicles only be sold in California as of 2035. So we need to make sure, our CTC needs to make sure that that infrastructure, that charging infrastructure is readily accessible for residents and commuters throughout Riverside County. The recently passed Federal Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act provides $110 billion for roads, bridges, and other projects, as well as an investment in public transit the drinking water supply, and internet access. California is one of the states receiving a large share of the funding. California is slated to get $14 billion from the federal infrastructure bill. Uh, of that, Riverside is uh, slated to receive $74 million annually um, for the over the next handful of years. So that 74 million is just in formula funds. That's just automatic, uh, flows through Sacramento and will come down to Riverside and, and the other uh, counties throughout California. The rest of those funds are, are done in a competitive process and that is highly competitive. Luckily, California has a decent track record of uh, of receiving their fair share of funds. And even more importantly, Riverside has a track record of delivering on time and on budget. And that's really what the feds look for here in addition to into the need. But I still want to underscore the fact that it doesn't meet our needs. Meeting those infrastructure needs is key to ensuring our state and region's future prosperity. Infrastructure really is uh, the foundation of our economy. It's how we move uh, goods. It's how we, how people move from their homes to their jobs. Well, so it really is the foundation of really everything that we do here um, in Southern California. And we've traditionally been a leader in the nation. Um, unfortunately, we've seen some underinvestment over the last couple decades. We believe that um, to really meet our modern economy's needs, we need to make significant investments, yes, in active transportation, yes, in transit, but yes, in freeways and roads as well.